See this? All right, we're about to go fishing, have a good time today, and we're gonna talk about the word of knowledge and how do you walk in that. Let's get into it. You ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's this is gonna be fun. Going. All right, guys, so we're about to go fishing. We're heading on this little trail, pretty nice. Takes us down to this nice, pretty little lake. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We want to talk about the word of knowledge. How does that, how do you walk in that? How do you apply that? And what is the word of knowledge? And uh, I guess the first time I ever had the word of knowledge, it was a long time ago, and I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, we went to the social security office to get you a new social security card, and this guy came hobbling by in front of us as we <laughs> sat in our chairs and you got a word. It was so crazy, guys. It, it was, I just had this weird word, rheumatoid arthritis. So I am not a doctor. I don't even know what this means. And this just popped up in my head, like a, a spontaneous thought. It was like rheumatoid arthritis. I'm like, what is that? And then I looked at the guy and what was he doing? What was he, he doing? He was hobbling along on a cane. <laughs> so he was, he was just hopping along and I was like, oh man. And you know how nervous it is to, you know, give somebody a word like, this is the first time I ever did it. And so I, I didn't do it at first, and I was kind of embarrassed. I kind of let him go in. But later on throughout that day, through the waiting period, when I got my social security card, the guy came out and he was actually an NFL football player. I began to talk to him and I said, you know, I know this is kind of weird, but can I ask you a question? He was like, yeah, sure, man. You know, he was a bigger guy. So I was kind of <laughs> intimidated a little bit. And so I looked at him, I said, by any chance, do you have, you know, rheumatoid arthritis? And he said, how did you know that? So that was kind of crazy. And I didn't pray for him because I was so kind of disoriented a little bit, but it was just so different. I didn't know what to do. I didn't end up praying for him. He would have gotten healed because when God reveals something to you, he always intends on coming through with the word that he's given you. But yeah, let's talk about the word of knowledge. So that was my first experience with it, which I was so discouraged. I didn't pray for him to get healed, but you know, you live and you learn and of course, I don't miss any opportunities I do now. So he's gonna tell you a little bit about what the word of knowledge is. Oh, watch out for that tree. <laughs> so he's gonna talk a little bit about the word of knowledge. What is it? How do you use it? You know, just, you know, share a little bit about the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is among nine gifts of the Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit. It's mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses seven through 11. Right. That gift comes along with the rest of the gifts as the Spirit wills. If you look in uh -huh. verse 11, it says, as he wills, these gifts are given to the believer. And so that time when you had that word of knowledge about that fellow, it was uh, a gift of the word of knowledge and operation. And so, so that's kind of why it just came out of nowhere. I mean, right. I was just walking, next thing you know, boom, rheumatoid arthritis. I had no idea what that even was. Right, it was a word of knowledge. God gives you a word of knowledge. It's not his infinite knowledge. He's infinite in his knowledge. He knows everything about everything, where everything is, what's going on everywhere with everybody. Let me show you something here, Jim, for a second. See this piece of grass? This is just one piece of grass in this vast field of all this grass. Look at this field like it's all of God's pieces and parts of infinite knowledge that he has. It's endless. This grass grows all around the world, everywhere. Yet I picked this one piece of grass. And this one piece of grass is like the little piece of fragment of a word of God's knowledge, his vast knowledge, just to help somebody in need. It's a gift of the Spirit. It is the word of knowledge, just like a word is a part of a huge novel or a book, it's a fragment piece of part of a sentence. And so God doesn't give us all his vast knowledge, he gives us a word of knowledge, which is a gift of the Spirit. When you had that word of knowledge about rheumatoid arthritis for that fellow, that was one blade of grass and all of God's vast knowledge regarding that man's need. And so you could pray for him at that moment. And then the gifts of, of healings would have come into operation, he would have gotten healed. Guys, we're almost to the lake. Ah! <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> So are you learning something? This is pretty good, right? So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you're getting some value out of this video. Do not 
eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit unless you're willing to walk in love. Because it says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, or it says in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians. Well, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 at the end. He'll take care of that for me. <laughs> it's talking about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. And then he goes into 1 Corinthians 13 and talks about love. And through that, we, we learn about love. Everybody pretty much is familiar with the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. And then he goes right back into 1 Corinthians 14 in verse 1, and he says, desire spiritual gifts. But first he says, pursue love. Then he says, desire spiritual gifts. And so love is the foundation or the door that opens the power and the operation of the gifts of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us, which is Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And if we have the Holy Spirit, we have God's love abiding in us. And we're abiding in His love. And if we seek to follow after or pursue that love of God, the agape love of God, His love, then His gifts will operate through us. And sometimes they operate without us even being aware of it. As you spend time in the Word and spend time in His presence and fellowshipping with God, your spirit's going to become more sensitive to hear Him. And so just be attentive every day to just give ear to the Lord and what He's speaking in every day because you never know when He's just going to speak something like rheumatoid arthritis and He's going to want to say something through you or heal someone through you. So always be aware of what the Holy Spirit's saying every single day. Don't just dismiss it because you think, oh, that's just me thinking that. Guess what, guys? We are at the lake. Let's get some B-roll of that. So, hey, guys, look. There's some fish down here right below me. See that? I'm about to show you a picture of that, but I was trying to capture some B-roll, and I looked down at my feet, and there was some fish right here. I got to be quiet because I don't want to scare them off. So check this out. Right, you know what time it is. It is fishing time. It's looking let pretty good. He won't let me see it. Ooh, you know some fishes are gonna love that. So as we were fishing, he found this really nifty thing. You know, you got to make use with what you got around you, right? Check this out. Yeah, look what somebody made for me. Aimed in the wrong direction. It should be out toward the lake. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty convenient. Yeah, it's pretty convenient. You can rebait it with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> See what you got. Maybe you'll get a lucky cast. Yeah, maybe so. Come on, get some, get some. Come on. Yeah, I had something a while ago. I know, and it took your whole entire worm off of it. Yeah, it did. Ooh, look at those splashes over there. We gotta get that. We know they're in here because we have caught them in here before. We got some five pounders, some two pounders, and you know what? We even got some six ounces. Right. Oh! <laughs> did he take your bait this time? No. You know, it says in the Word of God, if you declare it, and if you speak to it, it will happen. Well, you know what? Fish, you better jump on that hook right now. I heard this noise, I looked over to the edge and there was a frog that jumped in. <laughs> yeah. And then a snake went in right behind it. What? Yeah. Ooh. And then what happened? Are, are you getting a bite? I don't think I got a hung up, hang up. It's a twig, a twig fish. Oh, let's get that twig, twig <laughs> fish. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can't get something. Let me put this camera down so I can catch me a fish. Okay guys, like literally no joke. I was just fishing right there. There's my pole. Guys, you are not gonna believe this. So as I was fishing, I still got the pole down there because I want to show you the fish. But as I had, look at that thing, it's, woo, look at it, golly. <laughs> but as I cast the lure out, the Lord spoke to me and said, get your camera ready, you're about to catch a fish. And literally, not even one second afterwards, and if you speak to it, it will happen? Well, you know what? Fish, you better jump on that hook right now. A fish hit that thing and I began to pull it in and I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to tell this. But this is crazy.
Guys, that is incredible. You see, that, my friend, was a word of knowledge. And I don't know if you guys have ever fished with Jesus before, but let me tell you something. He knows things because he created it. And how fun is it just to be with Jesus and just fish and him just tell you, get your camera out, you're about to catch a fish. And I caught the fish like one second after he told me that. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Woo, let's go catch us some fish again. Let's get after it. All right, not really catching much else. Just some seaweed, so we call that the sea bass. But yeah guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, consider subscribing. And we will see you guys in the next video.